bill arrives, we just bring it on in. There are those that stop by the church on Tuesdays between 10 and 3. They stop by. And, uh, and also there are those that stop by on a Thursday at 5 o'clock. And um, there's somebody here that you could drop off your tithes and offerings to as well. But thank you for your faithfulness in doing that. Uh, we just give God the praise. Folks, there's something I want to talk to you about today. This is something that seems to be missing from our society. It seems to be missing from this world. It even seems to be missing in the church world. And folks, there's something wrong with that. There's definitely something wrong. I want you to give me, let me give you this scenario. Tell me if anybody's ever, made, now don't just make my scenario softball like I do, okay? But make it something in your life. There were two outs in the bottom of the last inning of the state championship. I stood in center field, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see if we could get this last guy out, all right? One more out is all we need to be the state champ. And waiting to see if we're going to we're going to actually win this championship game. And what happened? The guy hits a fly ball to me in center field. All right. So once again, it wasn't right to me. I had to take off running. Right. So I'm taking off running, and here it comes. And I jumped as high as I could jump, and I caught it. Yep, I caught it. You know what happened after that catch? The whole team come running out to center field, jumping on me, beating me on the head. Hey, I just got one of the outs. With everybody else, we had to get all the outs, right? But we won the championship. Guys, to me, that was a perfect picture of joy. At that moment, there was nothing but joy because we won the championship. Everyone was yelling. They were screaming. We were so excited. Guys, it was a moment for us of pure joy. Now, at that moment, I didn't think one thing about the lack of joy that the team that just lost. Okay? Because I was so wrapped up in joy. I was so thankful. In fact, I just felt like the Lord just dropped a joy bomb on me, right? A joy bomb. You know, we, we got our trophies. They took our pictures. And, and you talk about 15 guys, sweaty, dirty, with these huge smiles on our faces. But I want you to picture that. Maybe you've experienced something like that. Whatever level it was on, do you remember that joy? But then again, the next game comes up. That might be the next season, right? The next year, we didn't even make the playoffs, right? The championship team we want to repeat? Well, a lot of our joy was robbed the next year. But the thing is, I want to go back to that moment, that moment of joy, because my topic this morning is joy. The word itself means happiness, gladness, merriness, or it even means rejoicing. And joy, as you know, is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And all the fruit of the Spirit stem from the very first fruit of the Spirit, which is love. So, so the topic of joy, our love for God, listen closely, our love for God brings us joy in our lives. The main point that I want to get across today is this. God desires for us, you and me, everyone, he desires for us to live a life of joy, a life of joy. He wants us to have joy in our lives. He wants our lives to be characteristic, even, even looked at as joy. The very character of especially a born-again Christian should be joy, should be joyful. Now, folks, let's make it real, too. We'll have hard times in our lives, but that doesn't mean that we can't have joy. In fact, we can, we can actually have joy in our lives at all times. I want you to think with me for a moment. We can have joy in our lives at all times. At all times? Come on, Pastor. How can we have joy all the time? Guys, here's what happens. We experience joy in our lives when we look beyond our current situation. How many of you, when something bad happens, where's your focus go? Right on what's bad. Right on what's happening. We don't see anything beyond the negative of that moment. And you've heard me say many times, the scripture says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And let me remind you, just stop for a moment and think about it. The first thing that leaves you when a problem comes your way 
is your joy. It's robbed. It's gone. And why do you think the, the enemy attacks our joy? Because he knows that the joy of the Lord, the joy that we have within us in our Savior is our strength to combat him. You know, as Christians, we continually look to the future. We're looking to the promise of a Savior that's going to come and rescue us from this world. The joy that Paul's talking about in Galatians chapter 5 can be described as a festive joy in expectation of a Savior. Wow. Expectant joy, festive joy in expectation of a Savior. We have joy because we can forget about yesterday. We can see past today. And looking ahead at the future when Christ will return and all will be right with the world. Okay, it's going to take a little time after he comes back. So that be, is going to be corrected. But that's what the ultimate and the end of, of that's going to be is the joy of the Lord. So the night before Jesus was to die, he encouraged his disciples to look beyond the current situation. Folks, if you haven't noticed, we're in a situation. We are facing things now that we have never faced in our history. Never. And we are here to understand the importance of that. We are here to know that the joy of the Lord will be our strength. That the joy of the Lord will walk with us through these things. Because he's going to one day come back and he's going to remove all of these things that would rob joy. He is foreshadowing this night before the Last Supper, if you will, he's foreshadowing his death on the cross. He's trying to get his disciples to understand that as horrible as the cross is, and as horrible as his absence is going to be, that they need to look past the horror and the sorrow of that day to the joy of a new day when he will return and be with them. There is no time in heaven. It's eternity. There's no such thing as a, a minute, an hour, a day. No, it's eternity. It's eternal. John 16, 20, I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. We all go through times in our lives when we are facing a lot of difficult situations. It could be, it could be a financial crisis. It could be an illness, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, a failed marriage. But we can still have joy. And the reason I know that for sure is because the Word of God says so. We can still have the joy. James turned the table on those who would have self-pity about the rough times in life that they faced. In fact, James says in chapter 1 and verse 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Consider these things with joy because God is using them to make you stronger but also because you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Who says stuff like that? Oh, you're going through a very difficult time. You need to be joyful for that. You need to consider it pure joy. How many of you know what I'm talking about? When you're down, when you're discouraged, when bad things are happening, the Word of God says that we're supposed to rejoice? Yes, it's exactly what it says. And you may think, wait a minute, how, how, how could that be? Because God knows that the joy of the Lord is our strength. He knows that whenever we walk through whatever we're facing, we're going to come out even more joyful because God's going to give us that victory. Folks, you know things won't always be and go your way. You know they're not always going to be negative. That phrase, this too soon will pass, many of us live by that because we know now that it's true. But there's going to come a time when death does not exist, when pain will be non-existent, when all hurt will disappear. And you can draw on that promise and you can take joy in it regardless of your current situation. Robert Reed, a man, said this. He said, I have everything I need for joy. I have it all. His hands were twisted. His feet were useless. This man can't bathe himself. He can't feed himself. He can't brush his teeth. He can't comb his hair. He can't even put on his clothing. Strips of Velcro hold his shirts together. His speech drags like a worn out audio cassette. Robert has cerebral palsy. The disease keeps him from driving a car riding a bike, 
going for a walk. But it did keep him from graduating from high school. It didn't keep him from attending Abilene Christian University, from which he graduated with a degree in Latin. Having cerebral palsy didn't keep him from teaching at St. Louis Junior College or from venturing overseas on five missionary trips. And Robert's disease did not prevent him from becoming a missionary in Portugal. He moved to Lisbon alone in 1972. There he rented a hotel room and he began studying Portuguese. He found a restaurant owner who would feed him after the rush hour and a tutor who would instruct him in the language. Then he stationed himself daily in a park where he distributed brochures about Christ. And within six years, he had led 70 people to the Lord, one of whom became his wife, Rosa. So when Robert goes to speak, men have to carry him in his wheelchair onto the platform. They lay a Bible in his lap, and his stiff fingers force, him, force open the pages. People in the audience wipe away tears of admiration from their faces. Robert could have asked for sympathy or pity, but he did just the opposite. He held his bent hand up in the air and boasted, I have everything I need for joy. His shirts, folks, are held together by Velcro, but his life is held together by joy. How important is joy? It's that important. It, it holds your life together. When, when we come to the conclusion, as, as did Robert, that everything we need for joy we possess in God, our lives too will be held together and defined by joy. Guys, we don't talk enough about joy. We don't think of uh, and really understand how important joy is. We're blessed. So let me ask you today, what's holding your life together? Is it your job? Is it your family? Is it a hobby? Is it money? Or is it God? Is it God? Secondly, we experience joy in our lives when we participate in the work of God. Now think about that for a moment. We experience joy in our lives when we participate in the work of God. Abraham Maslow once said, I have found that every person who was sincerely happy, radiantly alive, was living for a purpose or a cause beyond themselves. Folks, when you're the center of your world, you can't see beyond. You can't really get to the place where, where life makes a difference, where things change. When you really appreciate what is holding this world together, what's holding your world together, really needs to be joy. Only God can grant that. Only God. No one else can do that. But the greatest work that we can ever do is the work of the Lord. There's a great joy to be found in living and working for a purpose that's bigger than ourselves. The whole idea, guys, of God giving salvation to man by dying for the sins of man through the person of Jesus Christ and then rising from the dead three days later, defeating death, guys, that's mind-boggling. Have you ever just stopped and meditated on that for a moment? It just blows your mind, so to speak. And what's even more mind-boggling is that God chooses us. God chooses us. He gives us the responsibility of telling the message to others and helping them to accept the salvation. Folks, you born-again believers out there, have you ever led someone to Jesus? Have you ever gone beyond your fear, beyond your self-doubt, beyond your insecurities? Because every one of you that know Jesus Christ, you believe with all your heart there's life after death. You believe there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. So if we believe it that strongly, none of us wants our family and friends to go to that place called hell. But if someone doesn't tell them the truth that there is a heaven and a hell and tell them how to get to either place, how are they going to know if no one will speak to them? And who's going to do it in today's society if it's not the believer in Jesus Christ? 
Folks, I really want to encourage you. There's more to our life. There's more. And when you find the joy of the Lord, it's there. And it's not just there on occasions when you when things are going well, like, like when we won that championship. Folks, that wasn't that wasn't just happiness. That was joy. But it wasn't just joy either. It was happiness. And then the next time up, we lose. There went our happiness, but not our joy. Folks, do not allow the enemy to rob your joy. Oh, he'll rob our happiness. Well, we did. Happiness is totally due to circumstances. You're only happy if things are going a certain way. But you need to be joyful at all times. We need to be joyful. We need to trust the Lord. We need to invest ourselves in others. Folks, you need to make an investment in this life. You need to make that investment. I'll tell you what, we just got a, a real special card the other day. And it, it came, it just showed up in a little box on our front porch. And we opened it up, and there was a handmade card. And there was a little thing in there that said, Joy Bob. It was a little, um, it was actually on paper. But inside there also was a Christmas ornament that had my name on it and Debbie's name on it. And this certain person knew that my Debbie just loves, of all things, bees, right? Debbie, right? In fact, just to let you know how uh, uh, lucky Debbie is to have me as her husband. Uh, <laughs> I brought her a thing home one day and it said, I love my Deb, D-E-B slash B-E-E, -E, my Deb B. And on that little plaque was a B, right? So I said, hey, sweetheart, I got something for you. So I give it to her and she goes, oh, thank you. That's nice. I'm thinking, shouldn't there be a little more than just, oh, that's nice, and set the thing down? You know what I told her? I said, get back here and give me a hug and kiss. Come on. <laughs> okay, I realize in this relationship, I'm lucky, all right? Because she does a whole, whole lot for me. But in all sincerity, as we do something special, you know what it's like. What happens when you help somebody? What do, what do you do when you, when you allow yourself to, to go that extra mile and do something to help someone? This week, uh, we had someone that's down with the COVID. In fact, right now, their whole family is down with it. And, and, and you know what? I mean, once again, no, no great big deal. But we sent them a dinner. We sent them a dinner. Shirley made this. Uh, Debbie's mom, Shirley, made this uh, turkey pot pie. If you've ever had some of her turkey pot pie or chicken pot pie, but you have, it is awesome. And... Uh, so we, once again, had that made up, and, and uh, Debbie's the one that took it over to this family, and, and we just gave it to them. And the, the, the appreciation, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. You know how it feels when you do something for somebody, above and beyond. You go out of your way. If somebody drops something in a supermarket, you're right there to help them pick it up. The other day I was going down there, and this little short lady could not reach the upper shelf. And I said to her, I stopped by, I said, excuse me, but... Here, let me help you. She goes, no, I can get it. I said, you really need to let me help you. No, I can get it. She climbs up on the shelf and finally stretches and works and works, and she did get it. There are those that you apparently can't seem to help. Okay? But I guarantee you that most people would desire and appreciate your help. She thanked me for offering. But that, little, that little girl, she was probably in her 20s. She was determined. She was going to get that off that shelf. And you know what? Good for her. She didn't quit. You could tell she's not a quitter. But guys, I want to tell you something. There is a satisfaction when you reach out to others. We need to invest in ourselves. Graduation, for example, they're filled with calves and grounds, uh, gowns, and plenty of proud parents and grandparents, cameras, video cameras. And I believe that the majority of the time that the parents and grandparents are happier than the graduates. I really do. It just seems to me the joy is, is just so excited with the parents and the grandparents. And I, and I just think, why is that, do you think? Why is that? They have invested themselves into raising and teaching and supporting and loving their graduate from infancy. Folks, there is a ton of satisfaction in watching people that you've invested yourself in succeed. There's great joy in that. I've had some guys in my ministry that was in my youth group that are now in ministry. 
And, and it's such a rewarding feeling to see these guys not only serving the Lord, but serving him in ministry. It's a powerful thing. It's, it, it's a gift. It, it's, I think it's part of that joy thing that you can't, you can't find words for. And every time you see him or think of him, you think, that's my boy right there, man. That's, that's the one that we poured time into. And there's a ton of satisfaction in watching people that you've invested yourself in succeed. Let me turn to Paul one more time here. See the joy that he took in Corinthians and Thessalonians, the people whom he invested his life in. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 4, he says, I have great confidence in you. I take great pride in you. I am greatly encouraged in all our troubles that my joys know no bounds. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus? When he comes, is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Folks, it's time that each of us decide that we are going to invest ourselves in others on God's behalf. When was the last time you did something on God's behalf? When was that? What did you do to help someone, to be a blessing? I'm telling you what, if you just pick up a telephone and make a call and encourage someone, you never know the timing that God has for that person to come on your mind, that you can reach them. And I promise you that you bring joy to that person. But still, you're the one that gets blessed. You're the one that God, I don't know if he just drops another joy bomb on you because you just drop one on them. I encourage you in this. You know, we're going we're gonna to continue to spend time building up and training people in the Bible. We're going to work together with others in ministry experiences. Guys, we're going to get back to church. We're all chopping on the bit to get back to church. But I want to tell you something. We're having church right now. Right where you're at, we're having church right now. And if you can't separate that, you're missing something. Sure, we'd rather be in corporate worship. Rather be with my friends, my family. But right now, we're still together. Even in heart and spirit, all of us watching the same ministry, we're still together. We're still here worshiping. So my challenge to you today is this. Cultivate joy in your life. Cultivate it. Be intentional. And here's how you do that. Number one, look beyond your current situation. Folks, don't dwell on this COVID thing. Don't dwell on what's going on in our nation right now. If you believe that God has control, if you believe he's the one that's in control, God's not going to let anything happen. I believe as he walks, he's, he knows what he's doing. We need to trust him in that. I don't know why we're not having church right now other than the situation. We know that. And I don't know why this timing is here. I don't know. I've never experienced anything like this. I'm one that's been in church. The first place my parents took me after they took me home was to church. I've been to church. I, I'm pretty sure I can count on just a very few short number of how many Sundays I haven't been in church in my lifetime. In fact, I may have missed more services this year than I've ever had in my entire life. Many of you are just like that, aren't we? Church is our life. It's what we do. It's who we are. But, I, but right now, it's not like it was. And who knows what the future holds. I don't want things to get back to normal. A few weeks ago in that message, no. God's people, there's nothing about God that's ever been normal. There's nothing about his work that should ever be normal. No, man, we serve a God, a God of miracles. We serve a God of love, a God of joy. You need to trust that. You need to trust that. You need to look beyond where we are right now and allow God to give you that joy. You need to participate in the work of God. You need to be about the Father's business. That's what Jesus said he was doing. He was being about the Father's business. And lastly, you should be investing yourselves in others. So a name crossed your heart, crossed your mind? Write him a card. Write him a letter. Pick up the telephone. Connect that person. Why did that name come up to you? Why right at that spot? Why right there? Maybe even right now, as you, as you watch this program, you might have seen some of the names that, that uh, filtered up through it, and, and, and something just said, oh, I really missed that. Call them. Call and tell them. Call and give them some joy. Call them give them a reason to say, well, at least a good thing happened to me today. Somebody cared enough to call me. Somebody cared enough to send me a card. Someone cared enough to drop me off something. Guys, it's, it's what feeds your joy. 
It's what helps you to continue that joy. And God wants you to have a life of joy. And remember, a big part of having a life uh, full of joy is your attitude. And not hampering Holy Spirit as He transforms your life to make you more like Him. Let Him do that. And He's not just going to do that through all roses and, and peachy keys stuff. No, you're gonna, He's going to bless you and give you joy through everything you face. So folks, there it is. What you do with that is up to you. But the joy of the Lord is our strength and He wants us to have that joy. He wants us to have that peace. And we're going to trust Him for it in the name of Jesus. Bow your heads with me, would you? Heavenly Father, I thank you with all my heart for the joy that you have brought into our lives. I thank you, God, Lord, that you are here to, to make us joyful. Sure, we're not going to have peace all the time and happiness, but we will not allow the enemy to rob our joy. He's a thief. He's a liar. He's a murderer, God. We're not going to let him have anything to do with our lives. God, right now, in Jesus' name, give us the determination to fight for our joy, to have that joy, not the happiness, but the joy of the Lord. God, may we do these simple things. But I promise, God, your word is promised that if we honor the little things, you will bless us in the big things. Minister, Lord Jesus. Minister. And God, I right now pray for our sick. They need a healing, God. They need a joy bomb dropped into their life. Marvin and Sharon, God, we pray and believe, God, for Sharon's miracle. And we believe for strength for Marvin as well. God, touch them. Once again, Lord, just, just shower them with joy bombs. Lord, heal Sharon's body. Smitty right now is having some difficulty, God. Uh, and I'm believing, Lord, that once again, in fact, at least both, they need your touch. They need a joy bomb dropped right into their midst, God. Give them that joy, even through what they're facing. Heal them, Lord Jesus. Heal them. All those, there's many now that we know that has been taken with COVID. Lord, I'm still believing there's victory over that, that thing, God. There's absolute victory in Jesus Christ. But I believe that even when we go through it, let's set aside the pity and the sadness. Let's step up and say, hey, is this how I go home? This is how I get to my eternal destiny. Of course, we don't like to think about that, but God, that's the worst thing that could happen to us, which is actually the most, the best thing that can happen to us. But God, it's rare. But at the same time, God, we just need to look at it as like, hey, whatever. God won't let anything happen to me I'm not able to bear. He promised, so I'm trusting him. My joy is going to be right here. Can't say as I'm happy about this, but my joy is right here. God, Drop the joy bonds. Begin to send them to all our people, God. Everyone listening today, just begin, Lord, the, these joy bombs that drop right into their heart, right into their lives, God. And may there that be given them strength to have the joy of the Lord in their lives. God, we ask these things and trust you for these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, I once again am thankful that we can have the joy of the Lord as we walk through these times. I do want to remind you that coming up in January, we're going to begin the Daniel fast. It's 21 days of eating nothing but just fruits and vegetables. And, but it's a time that we set aside to fast. We're fasting things. No sugar. We're fasting things, God. No, uh, no meats. And, and, but how hard is we eat all we want of fruits and vegetables? Well, it's still difficult. If you've never tried it, <laughs> then you won't understand it quite so well. But the point is, we don't focus on that. Our focus goes beyond our hunger and beyond what we're comfortable with. And we fast and we seek God. And right now, our nation, Christians need to seek God for our nation. I just want to encourage you guys to join us during that fast and trust God to make a big difference. And we, we are making available uh, some of the menu, some of the things that uh, it's recommended that you eat through this time uh, to give you some ideas on how to make different dinners throughout the thing uh, to help that way but also to explain what it's really all about. Well, folks, thank you for tuning in today. I want to thank our praise and worship team for gathering out special. I want to thank uh, all our technical folks for jumping in with us today and making this possible. So God bless you all. I still continue to pray. Now remember, church has been canceled for the rest of December, and I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain why with all the things that's going on with the COVID, and we're just going to continue to believe God for good things. I really want you to tune in on Christmas Eve. 
because we're going to invite you right under Debbie and I's home. We want you to join uh, your pastor and, and his Debbie, and we're going to have a special Christmas Eve service uh, at my home. And of course, it's going to, okay, don't show up at my home. Okay, I, I, don't, I mean, I'd love for you guys to be able to do that. But no, we're going to be on Facebook. Okay, I'm teasing folks. We are going to be on Facebook, Facebook Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock. Okay, I want to get it early enough before all the dinners, but late enough that won't interfere, hopefully, with your preparation. So at 5 o'clock, it won't be an entire hour. We would like to spend just a few minutes on Christmas Eve with our church family and all those. We'd love to have you come. Tune in at 5 o'clock uh, right here on Facebook, and we're going to believe God for, for good things. Folks, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Look beyond all this uh, stuff and keep your joy. I pray God blesses you with our biggest joy bomb you ever received. And we say that in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.